Hello, my name is Tim Serowitz with the Linux Foundation. In this video, we're going to learn how to gain access to two cloud nodes to run the labs for the Kubernetes classes. The basic flow is first, we're going to install PuTTY, then we're going to log in to the Google Cloud and deploy two instances. In a separate video, I will show you how to use Amazon instead. Similar, but distinct. Either way, you would need PuTTY. Of course, this does uh, work if you're from a Windows environment. If you're on a Linux laptop natively, which I hope you are, or a Mac, then you could just use a terminal and the SSH command. So this video is definitely aimed at people using Windows uh, as their local machine and then accessing uh, the Linux systems online. So the first step is to get PuTTY installed on our local Windows machine. So let me bring that up and then you can see, uh, I have a browser here and I'm gonna go to putty.org. Then where it says download PuTTY, we're gonna download two different packages. The first one is the Windows installer for PuTTY itself. This is the tool that we'll use throughout the labs to gain access to our nodes. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to scroll down and look for PuTTY Gen. This will help us generate the keys that we need or convert from a PEM key to a PPK key, which is the type of key that we need to gain access to our nodes. So I'm going to go ahead and download PuTTY Gen as well. Uh, looks like it finished here. So I'm going to double click on the installer, allow it to run, go through the typical setup process. In this case, I also want to have a, uh, a shortcut uh, on my system as well for PuTTY, just because I'll be using it, just because I'll be using it quite a bit. Uh, and it's there. There's a finish page that shows you how to do stuff and more information as necessary. Now to get PuTTY Gen working. Okay. This is the basic PuTTY Gen information. Uh, just go ahead and click on Generate. Now, it wants you to move your mouse. It's using random uh, location information to, to generate this key. Uh, in the key component, we're going to swap that out, and we're going to put the word student there. That's our username inside of our lab, student. You could have a passphrase. Uh, for ease of use, I'm not going to have a passphrase in my case. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and say Save Private Key. Says, are you sure without a passphrase? Yes, I'm sure without a passphrase. In this case, I'm going to put it on my desktop and I'm going to call this LF class and save. And on my desktop behind the, these windows, I can then find the new key. In fact, let's just go ahead and see if we can find it here someplace. Where did it go? There it is, LF class. Okay, so now that we have LF class, we can close up putty gen uh, and now it's uh, putty so here's my desktop and there's putty and so this is what putty looks like now this information we need to get uh, at least some of it from uh, whatever our cloud provider is going to be for example the ip address but what we're going to do is let's go ahead and create uh, something called master so I'm just going to call it master and I can click save and then by selecting it, I can load that profile later. So master, uh, I'm going to go down to uh, where uh, it has SSH and then auth LF class and then open and verify that indeed that PPK is showing up right there. Uh, then go back up. There's other things you can change, like uh, how the title looks like, for example. I might put master here. Uh, and um, appearance, you can change color. We'll probably do that on our secondary uh, terminal. Go back up to session, and let's save what we've made the changes. We will eventually need to put uh, the IP address in here. But until then, let's go ahead to cloud console dot cloud dot google dot com now the first time you log in it will ask you a series of questions about your credit cards and paying for everything uh, so i won't uh, go through that that should be fairly straightforward 
but once we've, we've added our credit card information, the uh, dashboard should look something like this. So the first thing we need to do is set up a new VPC. So upper left hand side, the menu area, and then scroll down to VPC network, then over to VPC networks. When that comes up, you should see some default information. We're going to select the create VPC network button and give it a name like LF class, for example, for my LF class. Then name, give it a name like LF class. Uh, the region, now I'd probably choose something close to me or perhaps something inexpensive. Uh, so US Central, for example. Uh, the address range, other information, uh, you should be able to just click on create at this point and oh look there it even stops me so you need to put some sort of address range in here so 10 dot uh, let's see here 10.2.0.0/24 uh, uh, that would give me 256 nodes in that network or I could do it slash 16 it's internal so uh, it's not affecting the outside world and then create uh, and soon I should have a class show up. Now, it uh, depends on a lot of things how fast it is, but eventually this should become bold and I should be able to select it. Uh, I'm going to select it and uh, create a firewall rule. Uh, it's taken a while, so let's go over to firewall rules. So we're going to cl click on create firewall rule. We're going to give a name like LF class for my LF class. Then the network by now it should have popped up and there's an LF class. I just made that a second ago. Uh, then we see ingress, uh, we're gonna allow and all ports and protocols. Uh, so in this case, you can say all, in all instances on this network, uh, the IP range and allow all. We have the zeros there to allow all. And we have a new for class that is going to allow everything. And it's over here, it should say LF class. So that's where our VPC is. Uh, and we see that indeed, um, we can also look at firewall rules here and all traffic is allowed on all IP ranges. So now that we have our B VPC set up, we can uh, go ahead and spin up a node. So we're gonna go to compute engine and then VM instances. We'll set up our uh, master node and then a worker node. So we select create, and we're gonna give it a name like master. Uh, the location, that's the region that you'd like it to be running in. Of course, I just created my VPC in central, so uh, central uh, there, for example. Then the series type, we're gonna leave that as just kind of a, a general N1 then we're gonna change this to be N1 standard two, which is two vCPUs and 7.5 gig of memory. We're gonna change the disk, so click on change there, and we're going to choose Ubuntu, and then Ubuntu 18.04, and I'm gonna make the disk a little bit bigger. We don't need a lot of space, but just in case, I'm gonna up the disk to be 20 gig in size, and select that. Then down here, it has uh, management, security, networking, and sole tenancy. Uh, so under security, when you select that, you'll notice it says enter the public SSH key. Well, this would be one of those uh, places where we'd want to paste our SSH key. The putty gen is, is a way of, of getting that. So putty gen and let's see, oops, no. Oh. Putty Chen, let's try that. Let's try that again. And load, LF class, open. And we can see here all the information that we need. We copy all of it and paste. So now we picked up that student that was in the comment field, and then that way it will line up with what the uh, lab exercises have. Uh, so then networking, 
uh, we can see it's, it goes to the default network, but we want the LF class network instead. Uh, and at that point, we can click on Create. It should spin up an instance. The instance name will be uh, tied to the, um, I should say the host name is tied to the instance name. So we'll be able to see that when it comes up with an IP address. The IP address is right here. So I'm going to take that information and paste it into our PuTTY information. So copy, put it under host name, paste. And again, it's the master setting. I'm going to go ahead and save it first and then open. Now it takes a little bit to start, so it may not be quite ready yet, but let's just see here. You know, I think we were faster than um, the node spinning up. It won't always update, uh, so if it doesn't come up after a couple seconds, go ahead and close the session and then start PuTTY again. That's PuTTY Gen. Oh, Putty, master, load, and open. This time it says the server's key is not cached because we haven't connected to this instance before. And we're going to say yes, connect. And it says log in as. So log in as, this username, student. And there we are. We're logged in. We look at our prompt, student at master in this case and we can continue with the lab exercise. Now, we may need a secondary node, so we're going to come over here and select master. A, the name itself is a link, and there's a create similar option. I'm going to change the name to be worker. Okay, uh, Just double check the N2 is the size of so two CPUs, 7.5 gig of memory, 1804 LTS. We see that um, under security, it has the same SSH key. And under the network, it is the um, same LF class. So we click create. And that one should come up. Now we can leave this one running. You can see there's a, I right click on the, the terminal in here and there's a a new session or save session, change session. Oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and start PuTTY by itself. Okay. And I'll start off with master and I'm going to load it, but then I'm going to change this to be worker and then save. So now I have a master and a worker. Uh, and I'm also going to change the colors just so that I can keep them distinct from each other in a little easier way. So uh, cursor text, we're going to modify that to be some sort of, of red color there. Okay. And now that that's, uh, we have a color set, we're going to go back up to session and we need to swap out the IP address. The new IP address is up, so I can go ahead and use that. I have to copy first. Copy. Paste. And let's save it and then open and see if it works. Again, we haven't connected to it yet, so yes, I'd like to connect in there. And we see now we have a new session. Again, student. And if you look, the prompt says worker. So student at worker, student at master. Now, the as you type, it should have been a different color. If it's not what you want, you can come in here and go on change settings and you should be able to change the colors and some of the other settings. Uh, you know, the student at worker, student at master, there's different ways of doing it, uh, but I usually like using colors. I'm not sure why it's, uh, it's not using the color that I'd like. So modify and red, okay, apply. The prompt is changing, but the text isn't. Something I'll have to look into. But at this point then, I can use them as much as I'd like. Uh, when you're done, don't forget to come in here and select all of your nodes and then delete. Uh, so it says it will also delete the two boot disks. That's important. We want that. We don't want to be paying for any storage. Uh, it'll take a little bit to shut down. In the, in the meantime, you can go to uh, billing and see more information about how much it's costing you 
uh, and make sure that you're not being charged for anything else. You can always come back in here to Compute Engine and then Disks, and hopefully those will get shut down here shortly so that I'm no longer using them. That should get you started in accessing the labs for Google uh, Compute Engine uh, for the LF classes. I'm also going to have a video on how to use Amazon. Thanks very much.